Hello and welcome to Monkeys with Fire. You join me tonight for another Tabletop Gaming Live, and this evening we'll be playing the 2 plus player miniature game Pacific Rim Extinction from River Horse Games. If you're brand new to the channel, click the heart to follow the live Twitch stream weeknights Monday, Wednesday and Friday from 7pm. Also, be sure to subscribe and tap the bell icon to receive notifications from YouTube for the latest videos and updates. And now, on with the show. Pacific Rim Extinction is a scenario-driven tabletop strategy game of city-wide destruction and chaos of epic proportions for two or more players. The game is played between two sides, the Pan-Pacific Defense Corp and the Kaiju. The goal of the game depends on which side you take up arms with. The invading Kaiju strive for destruction of all things and will stop at nothing until they achieve their goal, while the Jaegers of the PPDC try valiantly to protect the cities and take down the immense invaders. Okay, so I have the game set up in front of me, so join me at the table and I will explain the rules. The object of the game is to either have the most victory points at the end of the game or to completely destroy your enemy. Victory points are earned by destroying buildings, enemies and through mission cards. Each game round has at its core a series of turns, alternating back and forth between sides until all models on the table have been activated once. During a game round the following steps are taken. 1. Choose action cards. 2. Reveal action cards. 3. Take turns rolling the impulse dice and activating and four, the end of the round and moving the turn tracker. Step one, choosing action cards. At the beginning of each round, players select one card from their remaining action cards for each of their models currently in play and place it face down next to the appropriate model. Step two, revealing the action cards. Once both sides are ready, all action cards are then revealed and their actions read out loud. Step three, taking turns. The side with the fewest models on the table at the beginning of the round decides which side will take the first turn. In the case of a tie, the kaiju player decides. That side then rolls the impulse die. A result of one or two equals the number of models that they can activate this turn before passing the impulse die to their opponent. If they roll a blank, they cannot activate any models this turn and must pass the impulse die to their opponent. Models are activated one at a time. Only models with a face-up action card can be activated. These turns continue until one side has activated all models they have in play, at which point the other side takes the last turn of this round, finishing to activate all of their yet unactive models. During activation, a model makes a free move, then may use its action card. Step 4. End of round. Once no more models can be activated, the round has ended. So that gives you a general overview of the rules to the game. Tonight we'll be using a mission card. These are used to change the basic scoring of a game by adding bonus points for specific objectives. For this particular game, we'll be using the mission card of survival. So Jaegers can score the following bonus points. One extra VP per destroyed Kaiju. One extra VP per Jaeger with full charge, whereas the Kaiju will score the following bonus points. One extra VP per undamaged Kaiju, and one extra VP per Kaiju with full rage. Okay then, so let's get started. First of all, we have to choose our action cards for our units. Next, we reveal the action cards. So then, Strike Fawn is going to be doing a tail swipe against that nearby building. Hakuja is doing a burrowing action. And then both of the Jaegers are on power surge, so they can either increase their charge or go into a run. Since there are equal number of units out on the field, it will be the Kaiju who roll the impulse die first. And so both Kaiju get to activate in this turn. So let's start with Hakuja, who can burrow. 
So what is Burro? Burro costs one Kaiju Blue. Kaiju Blue is a form of energy that the Kaijus can use for their abilities. By doing the Burro, we remove Hakuja from the table. Uh, yet the card stays in play to remind us that this uh, Kaiju is burrowing under the city. We can then do a free movement for Strike Form. And we want to get him in range of the building. Now his tail swipe is a melee attack and then a pivot. And this attack may only be made against targets in the rear arc. So we need to move him into position. Strike Fawn can move a maximum of three hexes. And then he can pivot. Okay then, so he is now going to do a melee attack against the building. So it's very simple doing an attack. Basically, you add your skill plus your power. Roll those dice. They are then compared against the defense, which is the armor value of the target. So Strike Vaughn has a skill of three. He has a power of four. And we are up against a building which has an armor of five. Rolling for Strike Vaughn. Strike Vaughn has four successes. Rolling for the building. The building has three successes and one critical success. Rolling again for the critical success. The building scores another critical success. <laughs> the building gets another critical success. So this particular building has repelled the attack no problem. It's still standing. Okay then, so over to the Jaegers. I think what we'll do then is we will move Saber Athena to engage Strike Fawn so that hopefully we can stop him from demolishing that building. Saber Athena is going to do the run action, which is using its movement as normal and then immediately making a second move, which brings us into close combat. And that's Saber Athena's activation complete. We then go over to Gypsy Avenger. Gypsy Avenger is going to do a normal movement and then gain full charge. Gypsy Avenger can move up to three hexes and that then completes Gypsy's activation. We then take back all of the activation cards, move the turn marker to the next turn and so on to round two. Actions are chosen for the units and then we reveal those actions. In this turn, Strike Fawn is going to attempt a furious slam against Saber Athena. Hakuja is still in the burrowing action. Saber Athena is going to attempt a flying knee into Strike Fawn. And Gypsy Avenger is going to attempt firing its plasma cannon at Strike Fawn. The Kaiju roll the impulse die first to see if they activate. And they do. One unit is able to activate this turn. So is that going to be Strike Fawn or Hakuja? I think Strike Fawn is going to attempt the Furious Slam. Furious Slam is a melee attack. If you roll one or more triggers, you may spend any amount of rage to slam the target back one hex for each rage spent. Strike Fawn has a skill of three and a power of four. This is against Saber Athena's skill of three, plus one for its pilot's drift compatibility and an armor of three. <laughs> oh goodness. Okay, so Strike Fawn only manages two successes, rolling the defense of Saber Athena. Saber Athena achieves four critical successes giving a grand total of seven successes. Saber Athena has managed to repel this furious slam. Rolling the impulse die for the Jaegers. So one Jaeger is able to activate and that will be Saber Athena. Saber Athena is doing the flying knee. This costs one charge. When attacking, if you roll two or more triggers, place Saber Athena in the enemy rear arc after this attack, 
facing her target. So we want to get two triggers. And we are rolling three dice for our skill, plus one for our pilot drift compatibility, plus four for our power. Against Strike Fawn's three dice for skill and three dice for armor. We'll also take advantage of Saber Athena's regenerative kinetics. If Saber Athena is the first Jaeger to activate, it gains plus one charge. This is a special bonus that is unique to this particular Jaeger. Rolling the dice for Saber Athena's attack. Just three successes. Rolling for Strike Fawn's defense. That's three successes and one critical success. I've rolled a trigger and Strikethorn has a defensive bonus of armor-plated skin. If you roll one or more triggers while defending, gain one success. So this trigger automatically turns into a success. So Saber Athena's flying knee did three successes against Strikethorn's five defense. And therefore, the attack was not successful. Rolling the impulse die for the kaiju. And so Hakuja activates. Each time Hakuja is activated, roll two combat dice. If a success is rolled, place Hakuja anywhere on the table and end its activation. So rolling two combat dice. And we get two critical successes. Hakuja comes burrowing up from underneath the city. And that ends Hakuja's activation. And finally, it is Gypsy Avenger's turn. Gypsy Avenger can move up to three hexes. Okay, and so Gypsy Avenger is going to fire the plasma cannon. This is a pivot, then ranged attack. Before attacking, you may spend one charge to gain one power on the attack. So I think I will do that. I will spend my charge. So then, this is a skill of three. A plus two due to drift compatibility. A power of two. And a plus one due to the charge. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I managed one success and one critical success. Strike Vaughn has a skill of three and an armor of three. Strikethorn managed to roll three successes and two triggers, and the two triggers then allowed it to have one extra success due to its armor-plated skin. So Strikethorn has managed to repel that attack. That ends the activation of Gypsy Avenger. We then take back all of the cards and move the turn marker. Now on to turn three. We select our actions, and then we reveal the actions. Strike Fawn is going to attempt a death grip against Saber Athena, whereas Saber Athena is going to attempt using her twin plasma swords against Strike Fawn. Gypsy Avenger is going to attempt a gravity sling against Strike Fawn, whilst Hakuja is going to do a siege strike against a nearby building. It is the Kaiju player's turn to go first. We roll the impulse die to determine how many activations the player has. And so the Kaiju player can activate one unit, and I think that's going to be Strike Fawn, if he can get some damage onto Saber Athena before the two Jaegers gang up on him, then uh, maybe we'll get some points going. So attempting a death grip, it costs one rage, it is a melee attack. This attack gains plus three power. If this attack is successful, you may return your target's face-up card to their hand instead of dealing damage. So this death grip would actually mean that Saber Athena wouldn't get to have their turn. So the attack from Strike Fawn. It is three skill. It is four power. And there is a bonus plus three power to the death grip attack. Saber Athena, however, has three skill and three armor. Strike Fawn has the ability of Kaiju Strength. 
If you roll one or more triggers while attacking, gain one success. Rolling the dice for Strike Fawn. Strike Fawn scores four successes, two critical successes, one trigger, and three blanks. And that gives us an additional one success and an additional blank. So in total, Strike Fawn has seven successes and we convert the trigger to an additional success, making it eight. Rolling for Saber Athena's defense. Saber Athena scores two successes, one critical success and one trigger. Saber Athena finishes then with just three successes against Strike Fawn's eight. This has been a devastating attack, and so Strike Fawn is able to do two points of damage against Saber Athena. Strike Fawn does have the option of nullifying Saber Athena's twin plasma swords. What shall we do? I think we're going to uh, do the damage. We'll allow Saber Athena to still attack, but uh, two points of damage is, uh, is a hefty blow. So to do damage, the player selects random cards from the opposing unit's action deck. So two points of damage equals two cards. And so the damage that Saber Athena has received is a damaged rotator, place any held object within one hex, and a plasma leak, lose one charge. And that is the end of Strike Fawn's go. Rolling the impulse die for the Jaegers, one Jaeger is able to activate in this turn. I think that Gypsy Avenger is going to attempt his gravity sling in uh, retaliation to Strike Fawn's devastating attack on Saber Athena. So the gravity sling costs one ammo. If this attack is successful, you may destroy an object or building within one hex of your target to deal one additional damage. What we're going to do then is we're going to pull that building right on top of Strike Fawn. Gypsy Avenger has a skill of three, a power of two, and plus two for the drift compatibility of the pilots. Whilst Strike Fawn has a skill of three and an armor of three. Strike Fawn also has the armor plated skin rolling for Gypsy Avenger. Gypsy Avenger rolls two successes, two critical successes, and one trigger. We roll another critical success. And we roll another critical success. <laughs> And another critical success. Oh, and a blank. There we go. My luck has run out. So Gypsy Avenger finishes with seven successes. Rolling for Strike Fawn's defense. Strike Fawn rolls a critical success and one trigger. Strike Fawn ends with one success and one trigger which converts into a second success. Therefore, Gypsy Avenger successfully makes two points of damage against Strike Fawn. So we select two cards worth of damage. Strike Fawn receives a crushed tail and a punctured lung, which results in losing all rage. Because the attack was successful, the Gravity Sling also pulls down the building on top of Strike Fawn, dealing an additional one damage. Strike Fawn has received three damage in Gypsy Avenger's devastating attack and now is out of the game. Rolling the Impulse Die for the Kaiju player. The Kaiju player does not get to activate this turn, so it then goes back over to the Jaeger player to roll the Impulse Die and the Jaeger player is able to activate its final unit. Saber Athena is going to use her free movement action to pivot towards Hakuja. Since she no longer has a target in range to attack, that will end her activation. And finally, it is Hakuja's activation. Hakuja is going to pivot 
and then move backwards. Hakuja is going to attempt the siege strike against the building behind it. Before attacking, you may spend one rage to gain one power for this attack, or plus four power if this attack is against a building. Hakuja does have one rage, so he is absolutely going to do that. So Hakuja's skill is three. Hakuja has a power of three. And using the Siege Strike ability, he is going to add an additional four against the building. The building has a defense of five. Rolling for Hakuja's Siege Strike. Hakuja rolls four successes, two critical successes, one trigger and three blanks. Rolling for Hakuja's two critical successes. Hakuja rolls an additional success and an additional critical success. And that brings a grand total of nine successes. Rolling for the building's defense. The building rolls one success, two critical successes and two blanks. The building finishes on three successes, and so Hakuja's devastating siege strike is successful, destroying the building. Hakuja has the Brutility ability. If you destroy a Jaeger or building, gain full rage, and so his rage goes up to three. And that ends Hakuja's activation. We then return the action cards to the units, and move the turn marker to the next round. And on to round four. We select our actions, and then reveal our actions. Hakuja's action is Rage, so Hakuja can either gain full Rage, or do the Run action, whilst both the Jaegers are doing Power Surge, either gain full charge or run. The Kaiju have the least units on the field of battle, and hence they get to roll the Impulse die first. Rolling for Activation. And so Hakuja can activate. Hakuja is going to run in an attempt to get to the building as quickly as possible. Hakuja has a movement value of two hexes. Hakuja then uses the second movement action to get in range of the building. And that then concludes Hakuja's activation. The turn then goes to the Jaegers. Saber Athena is going to pivot once and then gain full charge. That ends Saber Athena's activation. Gypsy Avenger is also going to pivot once, and will also gain full charge. That ends the Jaeger's activation. Starting at the end of round four, we must check for the end of game. Each side rolls one combat die, adds all successes together, if less than four total successes are rolled, the game continues. At the end of each subsequent round, each side rolls one additional combat die until the game ends. Alternately, if during any round all Jaegers or all Kaiju are defeated, the game ends immediately. So we roll two combat die, four or more successes will mean the end of the game. And that is just two successes. We return the action cards to the units, so we continue to round five. We select our new action cards. We then reveal our action cards. Hakuja is going to attempt the siege strike against the building, while Saber Athena will use her twin plasma swords against Hakuja, and Gypsy Avenger will attempt to fire his plasma cannon. The Kaiju have the least models on the field of battle, and hence roll the Impulse die first. <laughs> and the Kaiju roll a blank, which means they miss their activation and it goes over to the Jaegers. Rolling for the Jaegers activation. And the Jaegers get to activate one unit. I think what we will do is we will activate Saber Athena first. Saber Athena is going to do a half pivot and then move up to four hexes. 
bringing her into melee range. She is then going to use her twin plasma swords as a melee attack against Hakuja. If she rolls two or more triggers on this attack, she may spend one charge to make another melee attack. Saber Athena has a skill of three, a power of four, and a drift compatibility bonus of one. While Akuja's defense is a skill of three and an armor of five, Rolling for Saber Athena's attack. Saber Athena rolls three successes, one critical success, and two triggers. Rolling for the critical success. Saber Athena rolls another critical success. Saber Athena finishes with six successes and two triggers. Rolling for Hakuja's defense. <laughs> Hakuja has the reactive skill. If you roll one or more triggers while defending, you may pivot once for each trigger rolled. So Hakuja could start to turn round towards Saber Athena now. Hakuja manages in total two successes which means that Saber Athena does two points of damage against Hakuja. Damage of a broken wrist, place any held object within one hex, and also receives damage of molten blood. Roll a combat die. On a success, all models engaged with Hakuja take one damage. This could be quite interesting. So, rolling a combat die for Hakuja's molten blood. <laughs> okay, so Saber Athena takes a point of damage, which means that Saber Athena has been destroyed. Rolling the activation die for the kaiju. And the kaiju get to activate. Hakuja is going to attempt another siege strike against the building. Hakuja has a skill of three a power of three, and can spend one rage to gain four power for an attack against the building. The defense of the building is an armor value of five. Rolling for Hakuja's attack. Hakuja scores two successes and three critical successes. Hakuja scores another success and another critical success. Hakuja finishes on eight successes, rolling for the building's defense. The building scores two successes and one critical success. The building scores four successes in total. Hakuja's siege strike is successful in destroying the building, and that ends Hakuja's activation. And finally, over to Gypsy Avenger. Gypsy Avenger is going to perform a half pivot and then move up to three hexes. For Gypsy Avenger's action, he's going to fire his plasma cannons. Gypsy Avenger has a skill of three, a power of two, drift compatibility of two, and using one charge will gain one extra power. Hakuja has a skill of three and an armor of five. Rolling for Gypsy Avenger. Gypsy Avenger scores four successes and two critical successes. Gypsy gains an extra success and an extra critical success which brings the final total to nine successes. Rolling for Hakuja's defense. Hakuja scores two successes, three critical successes, and two triggers. On each trigger, Hakuja can pivot once. Hakuja finishes with a defense of eight. And so Gypsy Avenger manages to do one damage, which removes Hakuja from the board. And that is the end of the game.
And so on to final scoring. The Jaeger player scores two points for the two Kaiju destroyed. They score an additional two points for the bonus from the survival mission. And they score one point for the one building still left intact, giving them a total of five points. The Kaiju player scores three points for destroying a Jaeger and six points for the three buildings they destroyed, totaling up to nine points. And so the Kaiju player wins. I really enjoyed playing uh, Pacific Rim Extinction. It's a lot of fun. Uh, the game is easy enough to learn quite quickly. There is enough depth and individuality to the various characters so that uh, you get a different play experience depending on which one you use. There is most definitely a, uh, a guilty pleasure of rolling huge handfuls of dice and seeing what results come from them. Uh, I really enjoy that aspect of the game, even though my dice rolling can be pretty atrocious most of the time. And so that brings us to the end of this Let's Play of Pacific Rim Extinction from River Horse Games. Do check out the live Twitch stream weeknights, Monday, Wednesday and Friday from 7pm. So until next time, bye for now.